So hello everyone and congratulations on making it to the final session of this Bowman Con. Um, session I'm going to talk a bit about the Bowman security process. Um, and I hope uh, it will be pretty short and uh, clear. So you can all um, get on with whatever you have planned for later. Um, First thing I wanted to show was the security page on our main form and website. You can find it under news security. Um, and the page consists of three sections. The first one is just an outline describing the security process and how that works. In case you find uh, as a user or as a developer a security issue, what you need to do about that. And the second part is security advisories which is a list of all CVE, uh, common vulnerability entry, I think is the initials for that. Um, it's an uh, international database of security vulnerabilities um, that are known. Um, and uh, we have uh, quite a list here, which makes sense considering this is a 10, 12 year old project also. Um, so we've had our fair share of security vulnerabilities along the way. If you click on any of them, you would get to the um, details of that specific security advisory and which versions are affected when the fix was released and a link to the Redmine issue uh, in case you want to know further details. Uh, and the final section on this page is the GPG keys that we use for signing all of our releases. Um, in case you want to verify that the packages you've got are actually the ones that we published and uh, they weren't changed in the middle by some third party uh, actor. Um, so you can verify every package with those uh, signing keys. Um, but that's kind of the high level. What goes on behind, behind the scenes when you send a mail to this mailing list? Form and security at googlegroups.com. This is actually a mailing list that is used by our security team. Um, and what the security team does is follow the security process, which is outlined in um, our Redmine page um, under the wiki. Um, probably at some point we should migrate this like many other resources to the website. Um, but for now it's here. I'll paste the link in the chat in case anyone wants that. Um, and so first of all, who is the security team? So the security team currently has uh, about 15 members on it. Um, some of these members are people from the Red Hat security uh, response team. They are security analysts, security experts who help us uh, with various uh, tasks um, such as uh, issue analysis and um, generating the CVE. Um, the second part is a group of uh, developers that are uh, active developers of the project and have uh, deep and wide knowledge, uh, try to have uh, fairly good coverage of the main uh, plugins and uh, form and core and various parts and pieces. So when a report comes in, we have someone who knows how to look at it and how to analyze it. Um, and there are a few um, folks on the list that are uh, used to be developers and are kind of still watching it, just as I need to know. Um, folks like Ohad, uh, who created uh, the project, and um, others um, that are busy managing others, but um, kind of... Uh, still want to be informed uh, right away when there's a potential security issue um, that might affect um, things like uh, schedules and so on. Um, so what happens when security issue uh, is reported via this mail? Um, and first of all, maybe I should mention why we should report it via this uh, mail and not use the regular opening a main issue uh, workflow that we normally do when we find a bug. And the reason is that security issues need special handling. Uh, even if you think it might be something quite uh, simple, there might be some case in which um, the issue could be leveraged to gain 
significant access to Foman. And since Foman is used to manage an entire infrastructure, any uh, security issue that we find could be potentially allowing attackers quite a significant uh, impact across an organization's infrastructure. Um, so we try to take these issues as uh, seriously as we can and investigate them. Um, and to, we don't want to uh, inform uh, potential attackers of a security issue before we have a good solution for it. Um, so depending on the severity of the issue, which is determined as part of the triage process um, for um, every issue, um, we decide if this issue should be embargoed or not. Embargoed means that we will avoid any public mention of this issue. We will not publish any information about it until we are feeling fairly confident that we have a solution for it and we are ready to um, release that solution to our users. Um, and the idea here is to avoid potentially uh, very significant issues affecting um, our customers or our users and make sure that the environment is safe and we don't um, hand out useful ways to get into it um, to potential bad actors before we have a way of handling it. Um, and those would be um, the higher severity ones. In some cases, we decide that the issue is not so severe and it's okay to publish it even if we don't um, have a fix, but we will generally tend to have a fix as uh, soon as possible. It, depending on the severity, it also uh, affects when we will release the, the uh, new version with a fix for the issue. So higher severity issues will tend to cause us to release a new version of the plugin or foreman or whatever component is affected right away. While lower severity issues, we would probably just wait for the next release. Um, additionally, um, for those of you who don't know, we generally maintain the last two versions of Foreman, um, which means that if you are on any version that is older than 2.1 right now, um, you won't be getting any security fixes for that version in the future. Um, and I would highly encourage you to upgrade right away. Um, uh, and normally, only higher uh, severity issues would be backported to um, the older stable version, and um, lower priority issues might be backported just to the latest version or might wait to the next release, uh, the next regular release, depending again on the severity of the impact and um, the risk of backporting the change backwards to older versions. Um, one more point here that I would uh, like to note for the benefit of our developers is uh, that part of the process is determining which versions are affected. Um, and that is one of the main reasons uh, that we use the fixed in version for every issue um, in Redmine is that we can do this uh, analysis and figure out when a specific vulnerability was introduced and inform our users when uh, it was introduced and what versions are affected so they know if they need to upgrade right now or not. Um, I won't go over all of the details, but generally uh, we have quite a nice collaboration with the security team nowadays um, and they will uh, handle also things like assigning a CVE identifier to every vulnerability. Um, they will assist us with uh, testing and uh, analysis when needed. Um, and if uh, there isn't someone on the security team who is uh, familiar with the specific area of the vulnerability, we may pull in additional developers who are uh, experts in a specific area and ask them for assistance. Um, yeah, so I think that is all I had to show. And if anybody has any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Uh, 
I will take silences. No. In case. Yeah. Uh, What was the? Sorry, I have a last second question. Yeah. What was the 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 worst security issue that you remember we had to deal with? Um. Hard to remember, <laughs> but uh, there were. I think uh, about a year ago there was a pretty significant issue with. Uh, that allows uh, with Cupid that allowed uh, access to hosts that we had actually even backported to versions that were out of support because of the severity. Um, I don't remember the full details of that specific issue, but I remember it was quite significant. I think it was about a year and a half ago or so. Cool, thanks. Okay. Um, and just uh, the last uh, mark, a reminder, if you find something that you think is a security issue, please send it to the security list and worst case will tell you, no, it's fine, just go ahead and address it as a normal bug. But if you're concerned that uh, something you found while working on Foreman is a uh, security issue that it allows people to by bypass uh, the authorization, uh, gain access to things that they shouldn't have access to, execute code, uh, anything like that, um, then please let us know. Um, and it's better to err on the side of um, reporting it as a security issue and being told that it isn't than um, opening an issue on Redmine and uh, then uh, realizing that this was actually a security issue and it's been lying in Redmine for uh, the past two months without any attention because uh, nobody uh, noticed that it was opened um, and some potential attacker gained access to the system because they were following the Redmine better than we did. Thanks, Tomer. Um, so if anybody is rewatching this, feel free to reach out to us on the forum and discourse with any questions that you might have. And thank you very much for everyone today for their participation and for your questions and to the presenters. Thank you for such wonderful, clear talks. <laughs>